Hello, everybody. Welcome to another uh, webinar of the Media Education Lab. Uh, I'm uh, very happy to have uh, Christina and Bianca here uh, to present. So I'll let them uh, take it away. And uh, everybody who's here are welcome to put in the chat, introduce yourself, who you are, where you're from, so we kind of have a better sense of our audience. Hi, greetings, and sorry for the lightning. I'm in a ho hotel room. Uh, I, I'm, I'm working with some kids outside Bucharest, and that's the best I could, uh, I could deliver in terms of lightning. I am the executive director of the Center for Independent Journalism. I'm not a journalist, and I am not a teacher. Uh, I am a media activist who loves journalism and who uh, started to work also with teachers and with students building on this idea that journalism is important and it needs to be taught to the kids that it, it it's important so we will tell you more about the uh, the program and what we do in Romania but I think uh, Bianca Bibi uh, uh, should present also herself uh, hello everyone, I'm Bianca Rus. I'm a project manager at uh, the Center for Independent Journalism in Romania, in, in Bucharest. Uh, and I've been working on our media literacy program for uh, a little over four years now. Uh, I love media literacy. I have never worked with, with teachers before joining uh, the center and I've discovered uh, just how important uh, it is to be able to be there to support teachers in uh, in their activities for a better tomorrow where, yeah, as Christina said, journalism is part of uh, our next generations, let's say, uh, one of their priorities in in a way to, to, to support uh, healthy democracies uh, moving further. Uh, and I'm very great, uh, very happy, <laughs> grateful to to be here with you today to find out a bit more uh, about uh, you and to show well, to discuss what we do in in Romania. Great. Yeah. I think uh, I can start the yeah. presentation. Yeah. yeah, you can start the presentation, and I am so uh, so happy to see so diverse experiences uh, and expertises in the um, in in the group, uh, as uh, we are also always trying to learn what others do in terms of uh, of media uh, media literacy. Great. Let's see. I think we we got it. I will I will start with the with the presentation and I will tell you uh, the part I know best, uh, the program and how uh, how it started and um, why did we decided to do media literacy. So we started in nineteen ninety. We were started in nineteen ninety four. I'm always laughing that we are as old almost as the Romanian democracy. So we saw the country uh, evolving and journalism, like in all countries, changed in Romania. People trusted journalists and journalism around 90% at the beginning. So it, it, it was huge to be a journalist in, in, in the country. Lately, the trust in media is at its lowest. In the same time, it's the, the media was hit hard like anywhere in the world, but also we do not learn about journalism. So I learned about journalism in university. We do nobody teaches us why it's important, why do we need to pay for content? Uh, what what does a journalist do? So at the beginning, we were teaching uh, in 1998, we started to teach kids journalism and to build uh, small uh, students' newsrooms in which they, they practice journalism. We realized later that was a form of media literacy that we didn't uh, call it that, that, that way. After a while, we started to do more trainings for kids. But the kids started to tell us that this is something that we need to tell their teachers and their parents. We didn't 
we we don't work with parents at this point, but we work, we started to work with uh, with teachers because we realized that we can't change a country by ourselves, and the teachers are the best partners that we can have in Romania in this approach of making kids more aware of the information around them. So since we started the program in 2017, we managed to work with around 800 teachers to teach them and to mentor them. We have around 370 schools and in more than 150 cities and towns. We are a six person NGO. So for us, these are huge numbers. It may seem little, uh, but taking into account how big your countries are, but for us and for our small team to, to, to reach around 15% of the Romanian language teachers that teach in high school uh, in Romania, it's, uh, uh, it's huge. Uh, our approach, in media literacy is no different in a way than what others do. We are trying to build uh, the competencies in students in a trans and interdisciplinary uh, uh, way. The Romanian school system is quite old. The way we are teaching kids in a lot of ways is still the way the teachers were teaching 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. So this, uh, uh, and that's a challenge because there is a challenge how we educate our kids all over the world. But also in uh, in our country, uh, that's, that, that's a huge uh, uh, challenge. How do you bring uh, classes and topics that seem out of uh, uh, reach or that seem no, non-important to the uh, to, to the students in a way the kids would uh, uh, would like them or will uh, love them in the same time mm -hmm. we would have loved to have media literacy uh, as a dedicated uh, class that's impossible because something should have been taken out, a Romanian language hour or a mathematics or something. So the teachers, it, it's impossible to, to do that at this point. So we decided to work with the teachers and to help them, to give, to, to give them the knowledge and the instruments in which to use their own classes, uh, um, regular classes as a, mean and as a tool to increase the competencies of their uh, of their students uh, and we we work with several classes but we will give you examples on Romanian language classes which is the most unnatural in a way place but we discover that is the most natural place in which we could uh, uh, we, we we could work with the teachers the challenge that we have when working with the teachers is that, as, as we said, we do not learn about media. Uh, the teachers, we had to teach, we have to teach the teachers basic media literacy information and vocabulary and also some basic media literacy skills in order for them to be able to properly teach them uh, to, to their students. In the same time, because we are proposing a, a different approach to Romanian language classes, they need to discover ways in which to teach differently. And because they need to change their approach in which they they are teaching their class, it's even more challenging and even more frustrating for, for them because if you taught uh, your class for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years the same, uh, if somebody comes and tells you, we have this great idea, but you need to do things quite differently and to use other texts and to use other ways and to allow kids to ask questions. Because in Romania, we have this idea, questions are bad. 
and uh, you do not ask questions because it seems that you will contest the teacher or uh, the, the teacher can feel that it, the class is some, somewhere there. So we have this, this idea, kids should listen and uh, in, in a lot of uh, uh, teaching. And uh, uh, um, so it was also important for us to teach them and to discuss with the, uh, with the teachers how um, how to allow kids to ask questions and how important is for them, for the teachers, some, sometimes to say, I do not know. Because there is this idea that the teacher is a god and that he sh or she should know everything and he, uh, he or she should be uh, without any doubt in control all all information that they uh, they, they tell the kids so we are also trying to, to to work with the teachers to let them know that it's normal not to uh, to know uh, uh, everything and that it's okay to be vulnerable and that they need to continue teaching uh, if they want to um, uh, to, to, to be better at, uh, at it. Bianca will show you some examples that surprised us in uh, the way uh, uh, we are teaching. Uh, in, uh, the, the, the examples that we, are, we will show you weren't thought by us. They they were started and presented by the uh, by the teachers with whom we are uh, we are working and th they are quite uh, quite uh, quite creative and quite interesting in this uh, uh, in in this approach. Uh, the 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 teachers uh, that are uh, that that are involved in the program. Are uh, uh, are saying that the the kids aren't focused on their classes, that they lose interest, that they uh, feel that the Romanian language that is taught in schools is boring and old, and in a lot of the situation is quite boring and quite uh, uh, quite 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 old and quite disconnected. To the uh, realities of the of the students and of the uh, of the kids uh, of the kids, and the the, the teachers had this idea that uh, they need new ways in which to uh, transform their literature uh, classes in a more uh, contemporary and um, in something that kids can see the direct link between what they learn in school and what's good for them uh, in their uh, in their day-to-day -day, uh, life. In the same time, we did a research and it was a stat it is a statistically uh, st statistically relevant research at national level in Romania and we looked at the the relationship the kids have with information and uh, with uh, with media and with uh, 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 on and, and with schools in a way or some content they uh, uh, they learn about media in uh, in schools the kids uh, perceive that they are addicted to screens so they have this idea that screens can uh, uh, are very uh, uh, very addictive uh, they said that they have this inability to stay focused unless they are uh, continuously visually stimulated. Uh, one of the kids uh, in the focus group said that I wish I could scroll down to the next class, which is, I think, for us, that was a shock. And for us, it was a shock because we taught in classes, we worked with kids a lot in, until 2020. But the, for the last three to four years, we weren't so present in the school environment. Uh, 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 and now we started to discover how much the kids changed and how much how how challenging is for the teachers to adapt to this uh, uh, new way of kids uh, behaving uh, class? We were having earlier a conversation that I would love to have also with you 
about how do you proceed with phones in class because we have a conversation in Romania to forbid phones during the uh, uh, during the classes and if this is useful for the uh, for the uh, for the educational uh, for the educational system and uh, eventually also the kids told us that school is boring in general everybody every kid believes school is boring because it's in their DNA and it's normal to believe school is boring. But the amount of kids who told us they do not learn anything relevant in school was astonishing and made us uh, think on how we can uh, help the teachers with whom I, uh, we are working to make the classes a little bit less boring uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, that's that's one of our bets that we can show the kids school cannot uh, uh, can also be less boring and we are using media literacy as uh, uh, as the magic that we are uh, telling the uh, uh, telling the the teachers and uh, when we uh, uh, asked the teachers what they love uh, after they start to infuse media literacy in their Romanian language classes, uh, yeah, they, they say that it start to look at teachers like human beings. You know this when your student look at you, looks at you and feels that you are not old and stupid and boring and non-teacherly interesting and discover that you know stuff. This is something that the, the, the teacher said that media literacy brought to their, uh, to, to their classes. Uh, it increased participation. So kids started to, uh, to, to, to talk more, to speak more. And the teachers were, were more uh, at ease with allow them to have opinions and to discuss about the, their opinions during uh, classes. Uh, we saw a development in critical thinking and but also in sub subject specific competencies so the increase is not only on media literacy uh, topics or on only media literacy competencies we saw that the kids started to care more about what they learn in school because they realized that uh, that's something uh, uh, something useful uh we 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 saw that the the kids can uh, have a, a, a larger engagement with um, old and boring and hard to read uh, school texts or uh, no novels uh, and all literature and we'll give you an example on how the most horrible thing that a Romanian teacher can teach in school because it's boring and the world the, the, the wording is very old can be transformed in something the kids will uh, will understand and will relate to uh, will relate to um, and also we started to see a reflection on their media uh, media habits because after the teachers start to tell them uh, what some that media is everywhere that you have a passive and an active media consumption that media is more than social the social media they are consum consuming and that they they need to be more aware of that you start to see how they start they, they they look at themselves and they start to ask questions about uh, their their media uh, media media habits and their media media actions so uh, that's my uh, that's my introduction and i will leave uh, bianca to to give you uh, some insights to tell you some insights about uh, how you can transform 
boring Lumenian literature into something cool. Thank you, Christina. Uh, I want to quickly go back to uh, a slide uh, where we decided we, um, in our community of teachers, of uh, the media literacy practice community uh, for teachers, uh, we uh, host monthly, uh, let's say, <clears throat> thematic uh, contests. Uh, this month's uh, topic was uh, public interest. And we asked teachers from our community to share with us uh, how they um, infused the concept of public interest in the Romanian uh, language and literature classes. And uh, one of the teachers in, in the program shared with us that she is working on the chronicles. The chronicles in the Romanian uh, uh, literature uh, date back to the 1800s. I mean, old texts about the rul rulers of the time. Uh, which um, were uh, used as a way to um, can sign, I think, uh, events that happened uh, at uh, at that time, of course. Uh, and this is one of the probably one of the most boring topics that they teach in the the eleventh grade, and usually uh, students don't engage with it, as you can see from from the um, uh, the quote we got from uh, from the teacher. Uh, but uh, she also shared with us what uh, what the solution was. Uh, I want I will get back to to the public interest and the chronicles in uh, in a little while. But until then, I just wanted to uh, show you a little bit how we we think um, or how we create the lessons that we um, we offer in in our community. Uh, we uh, basically approach the meal competencies as the operational objectives of the lesson that they teach at uh, their usual class. So for example, in the uh, Romanian language and literature curriculum, they have a lesson about the journalistic text, but they look at the journalistic text in a very simplistic way. Just, okay, we can write news about events happening around us. The purpose of news is to inform the, the people and that's about it. And then they explore all sorts of, uh, small subjects around their school or in their cities to write news, but they never really delve into why we need news, uh, why we need journalism, uh, what is its role and uh, stuff like that. And um, we uh, basically build upon uh, this um, curriculum, um, let's say point of a subject that, uh, uh, that is at the moment uh, uh, available uh, by, um, bringing the idea of okay it's important to also talk about the uh, the public interest and how it differs from the inter interest of the public and how it creates a, a broader uh, framework for the students to understand why it is important to first of all to have news to read news uh, to understand how uh, quality news is done and how to avoid uh, less qualitative um, materials um, as you can see here we uh, usually try to always link um, the media literacy competencies to a specific competence that they would address anyway in their Romanian language and literature lessons, like uh, applying techniques aimed at understanding literary or non-literary texts. This is uh, one of the, the specific competencies uh, that they, uh, they address in the ninth grade. Um, so we offer them a little bit of, of context as to why this uh, lesson is important and why it is it can be so seamlessly connected to what they usually teach anyway. It's just like a, an introduction to the discussion about news as they would do it anyway. Um, then they can go on um, after they have established with the students, okay, this is the concept, this is, the, this is what the public interest means, uh, this is what the interest of the public means and how they differ. Uh, they can go into what uh, I hope it is also called in English, the consolidation lessons, where they apply all the, the knowledge that um, they gained about uh, media literacy uh, onto their uh, texts that they study in the literature uh, classes. Uh, and here the same teacher that I mentioned a bit earlier um, explains how uh, she used the, the chronicles from two different uh, um, authors uh, to explain how even back then we had these two concepts uh, present in, in the um, news of the time. 
uh, and uh, how uh, it was, yeah, uh, basically um, going back to the media uh, literacy infusion course that she did. It was easy for her to bring these these concepts to the to the classroom, and basically to uh, give the the students a bridge to be able to understand what was happening in the past with the chronicles to what is happening today with uh, uh, present day journalism. We have had teachers who not necessarily specifically talking about public interest and the uh, interest of the public, but about journalism in general, uh, gay, uh, who had given the, the uh, students the tasks to compare. Okay, uh, how did the chronicles uh, back in the day, how they were written, and how does that compare to how the journalists do their job today? Uh, so there's a lot of, um, let's say, flashback moments that they can keep doing between what was in the past uh, and what is happening today in the lives of the of the students to help them understand uh, very, um, I would say, language difficult um, um, texts in the Romanian uh, literature. Uh, but also to understand, uh, but also in a way to explore the same concepts and be able to apply them then to their personal lives. Maybe the kids won't go home and read and read the uh, the latest uh, yellow journalism uh, publication, but they would try to look something that, uh, let's say, appeals more to the public interest than uh, than the interest of the public. Uh, this is just one um, example. Going further, uh, these are um, excerpts from our uh, guide for teachers because we try to incorporate ideas from the teachers and also our own, um, let's say, suggestions for, for infusion uh, with uh, other examples. For, for example, after teaching about uh, the news and how uh, the news, how a correct news piece is written and stuff like that, uh, they can uh, easily make the transfer to their literature lessons, uh, giving the, the students the task to um, imagine that they are the journalist and that they work for the local uh, newspaper and that they had just found out about the, uh, the death of Romeo and Juliet and that they need to write a story uh, um, yeah, about this uh, this fact using what they learned about the news, the uh, inverse pyramid uh, technique. Um, moving on a little bit from journalism, uh, because we, yeah, we teach in our uh, introduction to media literacy course, not only news literacy, but media literacy as, as a whole. Uh, for example, when we talk about persuasion and persuasion techniques, uh, we have... Um, um, I mean, teachers, not we, because we are not teachers, but the teachers have the opportunity within the curriculum to also go towards um, non-Romanian uh, literature. And a lot of uh, the teachers uh, go towards the catcher in the rye, uh, where they uh, were, uh, let's say, an infusion moment can be the moment when uh, Holden um, reflects upon seeing the um, announcement about the um, the prep school, and they have to identify the persuasion techniques used in that um, in that announcement, and then to basically bring them back to from media literacy back into the into the the uh, discipline to the Romanian uh, language and literature. Oopsie, I accidentally clicked. Uh, uh, the students are asked to also comment on the way that Holden perceives the message and the persuasion techniques used in the uh, in its description. Um, there are so many other uh, other ideas that we've seen teacher use uh, throughout the years, but basically uh, this is the let's say the easiest way to streamline the media literacy infusion. You find a moment in uh, uh, the curriculum that pertains more to the language and communication lessons that you can use to pin the media literacy concept in. And then uh, throughout the school year, uh, they find all sorts of uh, different uh, moments when they can uh, use the um, uh, actions, um, the narrative, uh, um, analysis, let's say, of, of literary texts to uh, do consolidation lessons and basically uh, discuss what happens in the texts that they read by using um, the media literacy concepts. Um, yeah, that is, uh, I will, uh, I think I will stop the presentation so we can all see each other. And also, I think we, we, we need to say that we piloted an impact study 
So we, we looked a little bit if there is any impact on our approach uh, and we saw increase. Uh, and that, that was, uh, <laughs> we were happy to see that it's not only fun, but also there is an increase in what the uh, kids uh, kids learn about media and a development in uh, uh, in their level of, of competencies. And we saw that there is a clear increase in terms of building vocabulary and understanding basic media literacy skills, which is uh, in a way our main objective through the uh, infusion classes. So to, to, to have a, the building block of uh, media literacy to uh, through all the kids uh, and but also we saw a small increase that we want to start uh, that we want to push further in a more complex uh, um, uh, 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 media literacy competencies uh, sometimes even small attitude changes in relationship with media and verification techniques, for example, or uh, looking at a piece of news and understanding what opinions are there and which is fact, or what's if there is a bias, what bias is in the message that they are, they are receiving and how they can recognize the bias on other uh, other texts that they uh, uh, they see so we we also uh, we we really like to measure and we had this uh, this opportunity to look in uh, 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 if the if there there is uh, there is change and we know that around the world everybody is trying to look and to measure the impact of media literacy uh, uh, actions and here th that's also an open conversation and uh, an invitation from us to you to tell us if how do you do it if you measure what you measure if how how easy it is to uh, to to measure the impact of your uh, your work and i think we should also add that uh, or maybe revisit the fact that this was just an example for us it's easier to work with romanian language and literature because all the kids have to have this this subject is mandatory it reaches the the biggest uh, all the kids who are uh, enlisted in school but uh, we've had teachers in the community uh, history teachers who talked about propaganda in their um, i mean more so than just describe the events the historical events but talk about the mechanism behind propaganda um we've had teachers of what other um subjects um uh, I think even informatics teachers, IT teachers, they also find ways to to integrate what uh, what we discuss very little, but I think we have a couple of them. Um, and social social uh, sub social sciences, uh, yeah, logics, psychology. Uh, we've had uh, so it's not just uh, yeah to to literature. Um, it doesn't fit only to to the literature classes, but also to to other subjects. So I, I invite participants, you can write in the chat or or unmute yourself. I have a lot of questions, uh, but I want to get the, the participants here uh, a chance to to dialogue and, and ask you questions. So um, Cesar, Lucas, Pamela, Nisa, Randall, Jean, if you have any questions. So I'll I'll start. Uh, so you you started to talk about the buy-in of teachers because that's like I know for us. Um, so hey, this is cool. There's media literacy. The students really love it. But then uh, the teachers are really afraid, especially with the political polarization, touching hot topics. It's like it's like there is some persuasion that needs to be done but also it feels like there is some confidence building um to give them so how did that work for you we are in a better position than you from a point of view that the polar is the political polarization is not that big yet 
in in the country uh, but, but there is this uh, this fear not to touch anything that may symbol political so not a part of the other is this idea we do not do politics politics is bad and uh, but this is something that we are trying to uh, uh, to, to 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 change that to 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 change the idea that if you discuss media if you discuss good governance if you discuss freedom of expression you do not do politics you are teaching the basics of being a citizen and yes i think sometimes this is one of the most complicated uh, uh, conversations that we we have to uh, to have with the teachers there is there are uh, we we have some things that is our approach the our training is accredited by the ministry of education so the teachers know that the the training that the uh, they are uh, entering in and the information that we are teaching them to um, uh, to teach uh, in class uh, it's in a way the ministry said the training it's okay in the same in in another way the european union pushes a lot for media literacy skills so this is also something very important that at the uh, european uh, european level there, there is an interest on uh, um, on 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 media literacy and how um, uh, how we can work better with uh, with the kids and with the uh, with the teachers i think our challenge is more in keeping the teachers engaged on the long term because a training it's a training media literacy is something cool for a while as you said uh, but the kids enjoy it but to change your approach on the long term it's more complicated and uh, all teachers are very, very, very busy with a lot of administrative work, not only with uh, with teaching. So we are trying to ease the pressure on them also, uh, building resources, giving them ready to use materials, uh, um, mentoring them, having monthly community meetings they can attend, and like 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 this exchanging practices. Uh, uh, between uh, between themselves tomorrow we'll have a community meeting where we'll discuss a book Maria's uh, Ressa book uh, on how uh, 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 about journalism and how to fight a dictator so we are we are trying to give them several resources to to, to use thank you and uh, Cesar we we're working with Educa Media uh with Patricia, Daniela, Mariana. Do you want to talk a little bit about your experience? How does this presentation resonate with what you're doing? Hello, thank you. I, I meet Henny uh, Hobbs here in Brazil, and uh, I don't forgive me uh, about, forgot the, the book, uh, to, to she assigned, uh, sorry about my English, but work with, I, I knew, uh, I knew media literacy uh, uh, since 2005, 2006, and it starts with uh, propaganda, uh, tobacco and uh, alcohol to teach my students about uh, how to hear, read this, uh, this, those phrases and uh, those uh, strategies to, to, to make, drink and, uh, and smoke. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to um, to also share their um, like how does it resonate with um, with their teaching, like all what uh, Christina and Bianca were sharing with the work that they're doing on professional development. 
Hi, this is, this is Nisa. My um, camera seems to be malfunctioning, so I, sorry about that. Um, what I really appreciated about the presentation is um, a more formal way to infuse media literacy into different curricula. Um, I find that in Southern California, kids are, um, kids are very anxious and excited to talk about controversial things they see in the media. So the, it, it gives it like a framework in which to, to have these conversations instead of just opening it up and having, you know, because then it'll, it'll suck away an entire uh, instructional period. <laughs> <laughs> and not have any form or function or direction. So I really appreciated how the um, infusing it into curricular areas gives it a manageable scope. Nisa, thank you for what uh, you have just said because I am uh, I am delivering a training for kids here. And uh, we had a conversation uh, uh, about media, freedom of expression and limits and what you are allowed to say and what you are not allowed to say. And one of the kids in, 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 in the room uh, brought a very uh, sensitive topic uh, as, a, as a conversation uh, point. And even for me, which I, 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 I have this idea about myself that I am able to have complicated conversations, it was, it was very challenging to do what you said. How the, do I manage to discuss about what I need to discuss, both freedom of expression, uh, opinions, facts, value, in the same time to touch upon the, the what the kid, uh, the, 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 the teenager said, but in the same time, not to lose all the time uh, in in my in my presentation to try to uh, uh, to, to talk about uh, this uh, uh, this topic and to make sure that everybody has uh, has a say. And it was really really hard for uh, for me. And that was the debriefing that I had uh, we had inside uh, 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 in in the office with uh, with our team how complicated it should be for the teachers to have these conversations and also to be afraid of maybe what the parents would say and how the per par parents would perceive that uh, uh, that conversation and what what they the kids may go home and tell what the teacher told me in uh, in class and we have these conversations with teachers how they can deal with sensitive topics and how uh, how how they may uh, work around uh, around them but i feel that's that's a very important topic that we may need to 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 talk more about uh, among us the professionals in in doing in media literacy i um, um sorry yes please oh, no. I, I just based on everything that has just been said um, about controversial topics and about integrating digital and media literacy into subject areas. <clears throat> it is fair to say um, that talking, say, what seems to be politics per se is, is complicated <laughs> two weeks before an election in the United States, um, even if it isn't two weeks before an election. Something we found interesting just in the past several months here, at, I'm in a pre-K through 12 school, is that at the moment, our integration of digital and media literacy feels less um, controversial, for lack of a better word, when we're doing it specifically in our health and wellness curriculum. Um, we have a, a wellness director, pre-K through 12, and along with having counselors at each of the three divisions, lower, middle, and upper, that department also does education for parents, for students, for the community, in, in collaboration with some mental health institutions, for example, as well as physical health institutions here in the city. And um, recently, we've begun integrating a lot of our work on social media, 
and on perhaps the idea that news comes through social media and that personal interactions are mitigated by social media, specifically in our wellness curriculum, um, because there we find the calls for it are, are pretty universal. <laughs> I guess in part because of the, the panic from Jonathan Haidt's Anxious Generation book, which is, um, which has things going for it and also has has aspects that are maybe not not as nuanced as they could be. But that's been something I didn't really expect. I, I, I my first couple of years in this position, I worked a great deal with English language arts and um, history departments, and that's still true to some extent. Um, but now I spend far more time with the wellness department and with the director of our Institute on Citizenship and Civics. Um, and again, we just, we're lucky we have such a thing. Um, but those are the people who find that everything they do asks for the integration of digital media literacy. And at the moment, no one is arguing with us and saying, don't do that. Now that might change. It may get to the point where they say, wait a minute, they're sneaking all of this media stuff into, into wellness. But right now it's a really powerful partnership. That's a great insight, and I think uh, it's 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 important. Look, we do not have that institution. We have it's it's kind of complicated, but in a way, we are now building an optional class on digital media liter literacy and how uh, and we are thinking now how to integrate more the wellness part. And you just gave us an idea how may, we may look also into the the, the wellness uh, part of the of the of the curricula, which is uh, uh, in our research uh, that uh, I mentioned earlier, we saw that kids prefer media, uh, but social media, and TikTok and Instagram and TikTok are the networks to uh, to, to to go. So the uh, most of the interactions with information is through uh, uh, through through social media and through the influencers. So in 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 Romania, and but that's a very long conversation. In in Romania, the journalists almost lost the battle for youth because nobody speaks with youth um, or almost nobody. So the media didn't con consider them a target uh, uh, that would pay for uh, for, for content. Uh, we, with some very small exceptions, we do not have uh, uh, journalists that produce uh, content on topics that are interesting for the for the you for the young people or the angles that they are using about politics or elections because we also in Romania have all the elections this year so we had five we have five rounds of elections so it's it's a it's an interesting year also here in terms of uh, of elections but everybody says kids do not care about politics kids do not care about elections but if you look in the media on what media, uh, what what are the angles of the of the media when reporting about elections or about programs or politicians? You will see that the 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 focus on youth topics or first time voters topics is non existent. If, if anyone have... on the call is interested yeah. in discussing the connections between. Uh, civics and politics, wellness and media literacy. I, I put some contact info in the chat. I mean, I, I'd love to talk with anyone and everyone um, about what you all are doing, what we're doing here as well. So please <laughs> feel free to reach out. I, I'm, I'm learning a great deal from my wellness partners um, on a daily basis right now. So Thank you. And we will leave also our contacts in the uh, in the chat uh, for, for you to, to have. We are always saying that we didn't in, we didn't invent anything. So we are uh, looking around, and for us, the U.S. was the main focus point. And I had the luxury to travel for several times to the to the states to look and to to learn about media literacy there and how which are some of the best uh, best approaches so i i i be, I'm, I'm always laughing that for me twitter in its golden days was the best media literacy school that i could have had 
uh, listening and reading from all the uh, professionals in the field. So I really miss Twitter, that Twitter. So we may do our little own uh, uh, network. We have only several minutes left. I don't know if anybody else uh, has any questions or any feedback or, or any comments um, about it. Those are, as we know, ongoing conversation. Those are struggles that, as we can see, are shared like between Romania, Brazil, the U.S. So my question is mainly uh, future plans. Like now that you have um, this evaluation and this experience, what are your next steps to kind of wrap up? Where are you going from here? We are redoing some of the work because we realized that it is still too complicated and we wanted to have those kids to have a PhD in media literacy at the end of the school. So that's, we are uh, again looking at our, uh, um, what we are able to, uh, to, to deliver through uh, infusion, but we are also preparing some developments because the um, digital uh, digital media, um education it's harder to be done through infusion as there the topics are more niche and you need you need more time than through through infusion so we are thinking to build we are building two optional classes one for uh, a gymnasium so uh, 13 to uh, no 11 to 14 uh, years old kids and another one for uh, for, for high school so we are going uh, uh, even to younger kids we are working with a partner who knows more about younger younger kids so th third and fourth grade because uh, uh, at one of our questions if they have uh, a social media account only two percent of the Romanian kids, that's a part of our research, say that they do not have a social media account of, on any network, social network. And for, for us, that was a shock because at that age, they are not supposed to have uh, an account because it's not legally uh, okay to, to have an account, but they are there. So we need to, uh, to be there and to work with organizations that are better than us at delivering that uh, uh, that that content. Uh, we are building webinars for the general public. We are trying to convince the parents to pay attention to what teachers want to uh, to do in kids because we have this obsession in a lot of cases that the kids in school need only to learn for the final exam and that's the only thing they need to learn in school but we are trying to work with other organizations and with the school system to show the parents that kids will use chat gbt for information so it's better to teach them how to use chat GBT and how to verify information because learning by heart uh, uh, topics will not be relevant for them. Okay. And, and on this, you know, surprising, but hopefully like, you know, um, you can come back and tell us how it worked and how you work with younger because there is as we know we have some expert like faith rogo um amanda armstrong there's like different people who are uh, expert in early childhood but there's not enough uh about um media literacy in early childhood um so we would love to hear more about how that works um okay so again thank you everybody for uh spending this afternoon morning depending where you are across the globe uh but we appreciate you being here and we'll see you in another webinar thank you so much and thank you bianca thank and christina you. for an amazing uh, session thank you